Hi, I'm Brian Hoagley, one of the founders for Real CISO, and I wanted to give you an overview of our premium platform. So as you can see here, once you log in, you can see your main dashboard. Uh, you'll be able to see their latest report, uh, any trending on assessments that you've taken over time, and then your top control gaps. And this is really interesting because you can get, you know, immediately a view of, you know, what are the areas uh, specifically here against the NIST uh, cybersecurity framework, or the NIST CSF version 1.1 that uh, are gaps for your organization and some recommended solutions that you can find inside the marketplace, a little bit more on that. Um, from a navigation standpoint, you know, obviously after you did the sign up, you uh, submitted some information around who your organization was. You can select your default reporting type as we populate more of that and your company size, um, as well as how many, for, uh, how many users you have within your platform, um, as uh, along with servers and systems so we can get a sense to help you price and figure out costs later on as you look to remediate gaps and, and address issues. Uh, you can also select and establish what your risk management uh, posture is uh, via your program level, your process level, along with some information around your organization size and current experience. And then we ask uh, what your top three goals are for your organization uh, around cybersecurity. So these are important. Um, to better understand, you know, what, you know, what are you aiming for? What are you trying to, you know, solve when using the real CISO platform to identify gaps uh, and then start addressing them? These all go uh, into the report that I'll show you in a little bit. And, uh, you know, it just pulls all the information in uh, for you. So it's, it's really nice. Our goal is to give you an auditable artifact uh, at the end of using this platform, but then also on an ongoing basis, continue to track and manage and assess your security posture uh, instead of doing it on a spreadsheet. So let's get into the assessment itself. Uh, what you can do is begin an assessment. Uh, you can see I've done a number of them here. Um, as you do them, you can see how many, uh, you know, what your completion state is. Uh, as we start rolling out other assessment types, you will start seeing those assessments populate down here in the bottom, along with you know, uh, di differentiating the assessment type from each other uh, on what's been completed. So you can begin a new one, uh, you can either start new or you can create from the last completed assessment that you took. Um, I'm going to start one from my last completed one, just basically copy that over. And as that generates the new assessment uh, to uh, begin, you, you know, you'll just be able to really just do everything right from this web page. Uh, we try to make it very easy. Um, again, the assessment questions are built on the Center for Internet Security, Critical Security Controls Top 20, used to be known as the SANS Top 20. Uh, but everyone effectively just calls it the CSC top 20 or the critical security controls. Um, the questions are really straightforward. We uh, wrote them in such a way that should be easily, uh, easy to answer by anyone uh, who's IT knowledgeable within your organization. Uh, and the answers really are yes or no. So the security controls uh, that are set within the top 20 are really the baseline security controls that you should be having inside of an organization based on your size. Uh, and you know, this is what the kind of the world and experts have kind of come together and said, look, these are the top 20 controls that we should be addressing, but there's actually sub controls underneath that. It's not just 20. Um, so we dig into those questions based on how you answer. So you could be starting with, uh, you know, the baseline questions of 25. We actually added in five additional high level controls, but essentially you just answer, ask the questions, what you're doing, and then how you answer those questions. So if I am doing an inventory of hardware, uh, physical servers and uh, access points. So I have some type of asset inventory on hardware and I am doing that. I would select yes. And then I'm presented with a further uh, questions around the granularity of how am I doing that? Well, am I doing it with an active or passive discovery tool? And here's some help information if you need to dig into. Well, what does that mean? What is an active discovery, right? What is passive discovery? So we give you some information here to help you, you know, move, move along and start figuring out what it is you're doing or not doing. And all the while you're doing that, you'll see your progress bar change. So you'll know uh, at any point how far along you are in your actual assessment process. Uh, you can answer these questions. Uh, you know, what am I using? Is it an ad hoc method? Is it a CMDB? Do I remove unauthorized devices from the network? Yes or no. Uh, do I use any type of NAC? Uh, do I use client certificates to authenticate hardware such as laptops? No. So as you see, after I've, you know, this is a, a, a copied over from a previous assessment, but as I go through each of the sections, uh, each of them have an own, its own suite of control questions that get asked. And as you're answering them or not answering them, you can again, see your progress changing. 
You can move between questions by just hitting next, or you can uh, you know, jump to the last and pick up uh, from a previous assessment just by clicking on uh, the um, next unanswered question button. It'll just bring you to the latest one that you didn't answer. So there's a whole four sections. Uh, you'll again see that these mimic the uh, critical security controls. Uh, and we added in some governance questions that CIS does not generally ask. Uh, and these are important to better understand security posture as well. Uh, within each of these, uh, you can actually assign a user as you invite them in to the organization. Uh, you can you know, add them to the user. They'll be then notified in this little notifications tab here that they've been assigned a question. Um, you can also upload evidence as well. You can you know, choose a file, you can upload a screenshot, an Excel spreadsheet, a Word document, a policy, really whatever uh, file you'd like. You can also add in some notes and as notes are added in to the, um, to the fields here, they are stored uh, in a sequential uh, manner so that you can always look back at them later. Uh, you can also remove those notes, um, but we basically try to keep a running history. Um, that's really the entire assessment process. It's very easy. We see people getting through this very quickly if they're knowledgeable about the IT environment and the organization. It seems to be a lot easier for smaller organizations because they, fewer people know more about what's going on in that organization. So you click Generate Report, and this will bring you back out to the main dashboard page, which will then present to you what your current posture is against the NIST CSF. So we start with the CIS controls because that's what IT folks and IT people who are close to IT understand. But then we actually bring the information through the uh, basically a Rosetta Stone of uh, control mappings out to your NIST control set. And this gives you just an overarching pure math view of how many of the control sets you've actually answered. And then you can see within each of the five families within NIST, identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover, how you are uh, aligned on each of those. And then within that, we actually um, used NIST's prioritization of their controls to be able to determine where we uh, maybe should focus first, second, and third. Uh, this is really great because this gives you know a company the ability to address top risks first, not just see all of their risks um, as equal that NIST sometimes is uh, you know uh, looked at with. So you could see things through the NIST lens here if you wanted to, um, or you could sort by priority and start addressing those uh, risks first, second, third. Um, from here, you can print out a report, and this is really a nice auditable artifact to provide to customers, your board, auditors, whomever. Um, and again, we pull in the information that we asked you during the uh, sign-up about your size, your risk management process, even your key risks, and this information all gets pulled into this report, so you can show that to, to anybody who's asking and you're willing to share that information with. You can expand each of the control questions so much as uh, you're willing to divulge. As you expand each of these and then go back to actually print a report, you'll be able to then create that as a PDF uh, or you know just print it out to a um, in, out to your printer and, and then hand those over. But you get a nice little report here with all of the uh, controls broken down, your what you're doing and what you're not doing, and where your gaps are that you need to address. So really nice little re reporting uh, functionality. Again, like I said, we make it very easy for people to, uh, to do this. And I'll just jump back into the assessment. Oops, um, I will go back to the report actually. We did an assessment. So one of the other things that we've learned from working with customers is that it's great to go through an assessment and understand where you are, but the question always comes out with, well, what am I gonna do about it? And where do I need to go address? And how am I gonna address those things? And ultimately, what's it gonna cost me? So we've developed a marketplace uh, capability that we've mapped in the controls of these different products. And we're you know, continually stocking the shelves, as I call it, for each of these products and these suites and these services to add in here so that any client uh, or user of Real CISO can immediately see how, uh, when applying a product or a solution, how it's going to impact their score and you know, ideally move the needle and get it better. So, for instance, here we can see that remote access management is not happening. This is one of my top controls, and I can see that these are recommended solutions for me. So if I wanted to, say, implement the Okta multi-factor authentication suite to, um, to my report, I could see what is the impact of implementing this solution to, uh, to my organization. And immediately I can see here 
that I'm moving the needle overall. I've, I've changed my overall score. I can see I'm specifically impacting protection and I'm specifically impacting this number one control. So Okta should be able to allow you to manage all your network devices through multi-factor authentication and encrypted sessions. So this again, uh, goes right to where you're able to, you know, take a, a product or a solution and uh, start addressing gaps. And this is the biggest value add that we see with clients as they're using them. And we're just excited that uh, this is a capability that we're able to bring to market. Uh, we're very unique in, in this sense. Now, it's great that I know that that's the solution I want to use, but how can I procure it? Well, we've gone that step further now and worked with vendors to populate the solutions into the marketplace so that you can procure them directly through this. And you know, no longer you have to work with a salesperson or work through some type of sales cycle. Uh, you've identified the gap, you've identified the solution to get to address the gap. Now let's just go purchase that solution and move on with our day. Again, here you have the nice little ability to assign users to a product. Say I want to bring um, you know, Nick back in, oops, to, um, to uh, maybe uh, take a look at this product for me before we purchase it, or I want to favorite it for consideration later, or even I just want to learn more right now, and it'll bring me right to that vendor's product suite. Um, the great thing here is as I've you know, understood how many end users I have in the environment during the organizational, during the setup phase, um, we pass all that information through and because we have the pricing built in and now we have the quantity, we're not having to ask what that looks like anymore. We can add it to our cart or we can immediately just check out, get to a checkout page, know exactly how many uh, uh, we need to be subscribed to for the 25 employees in my company here. And I can immediately pay by credit card or set up an invoice and you're done. Um, you've now purchased the solution and now it's up to you to implement uh, that, that tool. Um, however, you know, you see fit, um, ideally either with yourself or with some type of a, um, you know, managed service, or maybe you get some consulting hours. So we have a, a suite of, uh, of things right now within a marketplace and we're constantly building in, adding in new solutions. Um, so there's a number of different ways. You can either just get a, a quote through some of these. You can actually see what the pricing is and purchase them directly. And then as you've purchased them and the, and the purchase has been finalized on the real CISOs admin side, um, you can mark a solution as implemented. So I'll just jump over to another solution that I had. We'll have a number of free solutions in the platform as well. And you can just select that it is implemented. And as you go back to your assessment, uh, or if you ever do um, a, a future assessment or a report, you'll actually see what that solution is as it's implemented. And now you can add it to your assessments right here. Um, and then now you no longer have to answer those questions. So this will actually automatically update three questions for you by implementing the uh, MFA from Microsoft or any MFA that's mapped in, but any product does this. So we show that it maps back into the uh, assessment as well. So you'll be able to see that it is added in uh, to the assessment. So we'll just scroll down to the controls where it asks about MFA and where that's meeting it. We can move to the next section and we are implementing MFA here. Well, these are the other solutions that we mapped in, Sentinel-1. Um, and then we also have, let's see here, let's go to the next question that we have unanswered. And we should be moving through to, I think it's on the first section. Actually, here we go. <clears throat> By implementing MFA, we would have uh, required multi-factor as a sub-question. So now it's forcing me to really look at how am I doing this overarching question? So if I am doing that, right, am I centralizing my authentication? Well, I probably have to be if I've implemented MFA. Um, am I encrypting uh, where these things are stored? Do I encrypt usernames as they're transmitted? Um, so the actually implementing these products actually forces you to have to answer further questions based on uh, implementing a solution. So this is really good because it can uh, really help you revisit control questions that you might have otherwise just taken for granted or ignored. Um, so, you know, assessments are key to any type of a security program. Um, and it's, you know, it's something that you continually need to do. So you can see here we have dedicated admins. Obviously, if we're using admin accounts now by implementing Microsoft's MFA solution here, we have to be meeting yes on that question. So you can see here how it's we're trying to be as helpful as we possibly can um, and, you know, give you a 
uh, a really full view of what you're doing with the products you have, with the solutions that you have, as well as, you know, be able to make some decisions within that that'll best suit you and your business. And let's pop back out to the report and we can see what our um, latest assessment actually produced. And it should be what we had looked at earlier when we had just added the product for consideration. Now that we've actually implemented it and it's part of the assessment, that report will actually show up and it's no longer blue. And we're actually showing that we are addressing those controls in its entirety with the product selection and by implementing those. So I hope you enjoyed this demo. Uh, there's a lot of other really great features uh, and, and solutions uh, that we are you know, getting into this uh, and the roadmap is very rich. Um, pure recommendations, if you wanted to just jump right to some things is, is one area. Uh, premium documentation that we're seeing, you know, you get a policy, incident response plan, governance program and dashboards uh, with the premium license. You have the ability to invite in other users to the platform and give them a specific role, which is really quite interesting. Changing any of your organizational information, viewing any of your previous orders, and then obviously uh, enabling some type of security for the platform as well. We implement MFA and your ability to control or out uh, push out anybody who may be logged on or other sessions. So I hope you enjoyed this demo. Uh, please feel free to reach out to any of us at Real CISO. You can find my information or email is brian at realciso.io and we hope you have a good day. Take care.